On July 10th, we unveil the all-new JG9 Studios, the coolest NFL office on YouTube where all future streams will take place. Video drops at 6 p.m. Eastern, and a celebratory live stream drops at 9 p.m. Eastern. And now, on with our feature presentation. When people think of the greatest defensive coordinators in the history of professional football, and think of guys that revolutionized the game on that side of the ball, Vince Tobin is one of the first names that pops up, and rightfully so. His impact on the game cannot be overstated, as he was not just one of the best coordinators out there, but he was responsible for changing NFL history with some of the careers that he launched. There is the famous story about how when he was the defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Stars in the United States Football League, literally every other coach wanted to cut this undersized linebacker named Sam Mills, thinking he had no place on the team. However, Tobin viewed him as the best player on the team and made it clear to head coach Jim Mora and everyone else that under no circumstances was he going to be cut because the man could play. Seeing as Sam Mills, despite only being 5'9", is now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame after making five Pro Bowls and anchoring the Dome Patrol defense, I think Tobin made the right call there. There's the fact that when Tobin had the absolutely tough task of following up Buddy Ryan as the defensive coordinator of the Chicago Bears in 1986, the Bears showed absolutely no signs of slowing down. In fact, when Tobin took over, as crazy as it is to believe, the defense was even better than they were in 1985. Whereas they allowed 12.4 points per game in 1985, they cut that down to 11.7 in 1986, and had the number one defense in football once again under Tobin in 1988, when they got the number one seed in the NFC after allowing just over 13 points per game. Vince Tobin was a heck of a man and a heck of a defensive mastermind who had a knack for talent and for getting the most out of his units. However, most people probably think of Tobin not for his time in the USFL with Sam Mills and not for his time as the defensive coordinator of the Chicago Bears that succeeded Buddy Ryan. Rather, they think of him for his time with the team that you've been watching this whole time, the Arizona Cardinals. Seeing as not only was he the head coach there for five years, but in 1998, he did the unthinkable. He got the Cardinals to the playoffs for the first time since they moved to Arizona, and gave them their first playoff win since the 1940s, snapping an over 50-year drought. For that alone, Tobin has forever etched his name into NFL history, as after years of coaches who were unable to get the job done, with one of them, oddly enough, being Buddy Ryan, Vince Tobin helped give the Cardinals, their fans, and the state of Arizona what they deserved and what they had been waiting for. And what you might not know is what Tobin did once the team got into the playoffs, because he did something that you don't see a whole lot of coaches, if any, do. It's an underrated and underappreciated move that helped propel the team to victory, even if it didn't show up on the box score and it's a move that deserves a deep dive today, because it truly shows just what kind of man and what kind of character the late Vince Tobin was. Because this is the story behind one of the greatest coaching moves of Vince Tobin's entire NFL career. Before I talk about the actual move in question and what exactly Tobin did for this playoff game during the 1998 season, we need some context to understand just how Tobin and the Cardinals got to this point. The year is 1998, and no one quite knows how it happened, but for the first time since they moved to Arizona, for the first time since the strike shortened season in 1982, and for the first time in a full season since 1975, the Arizona Cardinals found themselves in the postseason. Heck, it was the team's first winning record since 1984, when they were back in St. Louis. It was a season that no one saw coming, especially when you consider the statistics. 
they had a point differential of minus 53, making them the only team in 1998 to make it, despite scoring fewer points than they allowed. And they're widely regarded as one of the worst teams to ever make it to the postseason. And not only that, and not only did they have to bounce back from a 6-7 and seven start to win their final three games just to have a fighting chance, but the Cards did it in just about the most dramatic way possible, winning each of their final three games on the final play of the game with a field goal by Chris Jackie. It was like deja vu every single week, where the Cards would win at the last second, and Tobin's team would come out on top. And now, they were playing playoff football. And make no mistake about it, Vince Tobin was a big reason for why the Cardinals were successful in 1998, as this was a team that won because of their head coach, and not in spite of him. When a lot of people, including offensive tackle Lomas Brown, were giving up on Jake Plummer, especially following a 34-7 loss to the New York Giants where he took seven sacks, Tobin showed faith in the Arizona State quarterback and the second-year man, and kept him in. This was a move that paid dividends later on. In Week 15 against the Philadelphia Eagles, Tobin decided to be aggressive and have his offense go for it on fourth down three times, which was a strategy that gave the offense a ton of confidence, and enough confidence to eventually win the game in overtime. And Tobin was a coach who players gravitated toward, even though he might not have been the flashiest guy, or the most exciting guy, or the most notable personality. Said one writer on Tobin, Vince Tobin has been defined by who and what he isn't. He isn't colorful or very quotable. He isn't a personality who fills up a room, like Mike Dicka. He isn't a self-promoter. He doesn't have a TV show or a radio show. He won't permit himself to react to media criticism and the second-guessing. He's not rah-rah. He won't wrap his arms around a player in a fierce hug, nor will he berate a player in public view. He may not show his joy to our satisfaction, but he feels it more intensely than we know. Vince Tobin is who he is. And that just about sums it up. Vince Tobin and the way he conducted himself was a big reason why the Cardinals finally, after all those years, got the monkey off their back and made it to the playoffs. However, even though Tobin was there to witness history and witness the Cardinals finally make the playoffs and give the desert something to be proud of, there was someone who couldn't exactly do that. And that was this man right here, wide receiver Anthony Edwards. Edwards had been on the Cardinals since 1991, and has gone through his fair share of tough times. However, he was on the roster for this 1998 season, not just because of the impact he provided in the passing game over the past few seasons, but because of his contributions on special teams. As in 1997, he led the Cardinals in special teams tackles. But while Edwards might have been on the roster, he wasn't able to contribute directly on the field. Not only did Edwards have a knee injury, but the injury was so severe that Edwards was placed on injured reserve for the entire season and did not play a single game. In fact, Edwards would never play another game after the 1997 season. Still, Tobin wanted to make sure that even though he couldn't play and couldn't do anything on the field, that he was a part of the team and that he was still a part in all of this. Prior to the team's playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys in the wildcard round, Tobin had Edwards give a speech to the team after practice. Said Edwards on what was said during the speech, I encouraged them and reminded them that we haven't reached our ultimate goal, which is to make it to the Super Bowl. I told them we have to work together as a unit and that we shouldn't be happy to just make the playoffs. God gave me the grace to be an inspiration. And if I can be an inspiration, I'll do whatever I can to help the team. That's an amazing mindset to have, and it did not go unnoticed from Tobin. But as much as Edwards was trying to help the team, he couldn't travel with the team, nor could any of the other players on injured reserve, nor could any of the players on the team's practice squad. In total, when you add all of those guys up, 
there were eight guys who were with the team who were a part of this indirectly who were unable to travel with the team when they played on the road. And the reason for that was quite simply NFL rules. Under the rules, only players who are on the active roster can be on the sidelines for a road game. Why the rules are like this, it's unclear. It could be a competition issue, a space issue, and an accommodation, transportation, and lodging issue. However, it's been like this for a while, and it's still like it to this day, where if you are a player on injured reserve, or you're not a player on the game day roster, you are not allowed to be there on the sidelines if your team is playing on the road. This meant that for this wild card game against the Cowboys, Anthony Edwards, as in the man who had been a part of this team for nearly a decade, and the man who was giving the speech to motivate the squad during practice, was not going to be able to be there and be with his teammates, even though, in the eyes of Vince Tobin, he was a huge part of their success despite not playing a down. Said Tobin on Edwards, Anthony is a very emotional guy. He's been a big part of our football team for many years. Your experiences are based on what has happened in the past. And when I was in Indianapolis and first got around a coach, Ted Marchabroda, that had players get up and speak when we got into that playoff run. We had a guy who used to be here, defensive end Freddie Joe Nunn, talk before our last game. That's what Anthony did. Freddie continued to be that guy for us and continued to do a great job. I just felt like Anthony would do the same thing. And this is where Vince Tobin did something that was almost unheard of, that you never saw coaches do, and that truly showed the man and the character and the type of guy that he was. Because after the Cardinals beat the Chargers to officially advance to the playoffs, Vince Tobin walked into the office of owner Bill Bidwell and said that he wanted the whole team to go to the game. He didn't just want the guys on the active roster who were going to be playing. He wanted Anthony Edwards, the rest of the guys on injured reserve, and the four guys on the practice squad to be there as well. No, they were not allowed to be on the sideline per NFL rules, but there was nothing stopping them from being in the stands at Texas Stadium and watching the game that was among the rest of the crowd. These players played just as much of a part in our success as everyone else and I want them there. I don't want them watching the game at home on their couch. They've earned the right to be here and be with the team. And this was so important to Vince Tobin that the entire team, active or inactive, was there that Bill Bidwell, in a rare display of not being cheap, granted Tobin's request. When you're getting the Bidwells to spend money that they don't need to spend, that's when you know. He saw just how much this meant to Tobin, and saw how important this was to him, that he paid for the players to fly to Dallas, and paid for eight tickets so the players, including Anthony Edwards, could watch the game from the stands. Said Bidwell on this, Vince wanted them to come to this first game, and I said okay. It is a reward, as long as they understand it's not a party. Said Edwards about Tobin's request, and how grateful he was that he could be there, even if he wasn't allowed to be on the sideline. I love it. It's we in this team. We all should go. I feel like we're all a part of this. And again, that's just the kind of guy that Vince Tobin was. It wasn't just empty talk about team with him. He truly wanted everyone there, and was set to do whatever it took to make it happen. Even though NFL rules almost made such a thing impossible. And you can bet that the whole team, whether they were on the sidelines or in the stands, was thrilled when the Cards won their first playoff game since 1947, and in an upset, defeated their division rival, the Dallas Cowboys, by a final score of 20-7. Vince Tobin, above all else, was a heck of an individual. There's a reason that other coaches were even rooting for him to get into the playoffs, including New York Giants head coach Jim Fossil, who said that once he realized his Giants were mathematically eliminated in Week 17, that his emotions switched to rooting for the Cardinals, saying, I wanted them to win. 
I'm genuinely happy for him. The year I spent there, he treated me fantastically. He was a classy man who was easy to root for. And even if he might not have had the craziest or most charismatic personality, he did a lot of great things for the game. And perhaps there's no better example of that than when he had the entire team, even those who couldn't play, come out for this playoff game, doing what no other coach would do. And nearly a quarter century after that game, Vince Tobin's name is truly etched into NFL history. Rest in peace to a heck of a man. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.